Urban Dictionary Corner, it's legendary performance poet Dr John cooper Clark. John says punk will never die, but from the look of him, I'd give it five years max. <laughs> it's lovely to have you on the show. You're a fan of Countdown, right? Big fan. Chase it round the channels three times nightly. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Now, would you be good at actually playing the game? Are you, are you decent at countdown? Oh, I'm shit up. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, John, your, your poems have been on the GCSE syllabus. How do you, how do you feel about that? It's very established. Well, uh, well, obviously, I'm delighted that my poetry is being rammed down the reluctant throats of school children. <laughs> Finally, I'm in a position to make people unhappy, and there's nothing <laughs> they can do about it. <laughs> Poems for us. I have, uh, Jimmy, yeah. Uh, less is often more. And nothing proves this more than the time honoured haiku. Uh, it's a poem of a 17 syllable discipline, and I've written a few in my time. In fact, I embraced minimalism in 1958, and I, I, re I realised that uh, material possessions were merely a, a, a roadblock on the highway of enlightenment. And this is the ha first haiku I ever wrote, the one that put me on the road of Zen. <laughs> haiku number one. To freeze the moment in 17 syllables is very difficult. <laughs> 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 One could live a lifetime and never get round to uh, verifying their various lifestyle choices, but uh, I was lucky enough two years ago doing the Glastonbury Festival. So was the Dalai Lama, the king of minimalism himself. So I arranged a meeting with him. We, you know, I was introduced, we shook hands, the whole of my right-hand side sobered up. And that's when I explained <laughs> to him my lifestyle choice of uh, minimalism. And many years ago, I said, Your Excellency, I realised that, uh, like I've just told you now, material possessions, etc. Put it this way, I've got it down to a George Foreman grill and a bottle of disinfectant. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> and his reply... I've only ever forgotten it once. <laughs> <laughs> and he said to me, he said, Jesus, Clark, you want to get some shit? <laughs> True story, you couldn't make it up, literally. And with that in mind, uh, minimalism, it's always been a strong thing in my act, you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't credit people with a, a gigantic attention span. And I've circumnavigated the globe nine, count them nine times, reciting limericks all the way, and take it from a professional. It's, it's the people's choice. <laughs> uh, for instance, uh, two ugly sisters from Fordham took a walk one day out of boredom. On the way back, a sex maniac jumped out of a bush and ignored him. So it's a two-liner is as minimal as I can get, and uh, it's, it, it's an unsavoury subject, but somebody's got to deal with it. I call this one necrophilia. <laughs> Fed up with foreplay and all that palaver. Have a cadaver. <laughs> John Cooper Clark, everyone. All the way to OK, before we go on, a chance for our teams to win some bonus points. In honour of Dr John Cooper Clark being here, I've asked all our players to write poems. Uh, John will, of course, be judging five points to the best poet among you. OK, Kevin, you're up first. Take it away. Yes, the poem. Um, this is actually a tribute to the Countdown. Oh, well, fabulous. I penned on the train here. An ode to Countdown. Countdown is a telly show of letters, words and sums. Countdown is a telly show for the unemployed and full-time mums. <laughs> Countdown is a telly show for eating crisps and smoking blow. So when that clock begins to tick, and the only word that you have is dick, remember it's a bit of fun and you can try again on Channel 4 Plus 1. <laughs> so... <laughs> What did, what did you make of that poem? I thought that was fabulous. I thought he's got the demographic nailed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jessica, you're up next. I've taken uh, inspiration from um, the sonnets of a poet called William Shakespeare. <laughs> um, 
because I'm married and, you know, I've got a baby on the way, so I'm, what I'm trying to say is I've moved on from my past life and I'm in a really good place now. It's about my ex. It's called Hate Sonics 18. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I compare thee to a drizzly day? <laughs> Thou art more miserable than thrush. <laughs> Thou art a veruca, thou art an ingrown hair, thou art a nosebleed, an ad for go compare. <laughs> thou art a hangover on January the 1st, thou art stepping on an upturned plug, the stench of urine after asparagus. <laughs> Indoor traces of slug. <laughs> thou art my last Rolo in a bad way. <laughs> and taxis all long gone. Thou wast lying when thou said thou wast staying over at Dave's. I was actually going down on my friend Kate. Right. <laughs> a catalogue of cultivated hatreds. <laughs> and uh, a, a bit in my style, so I kind of feel validated by that poem. And uh, that was terrific, Jessica. That's, it was a bit of a homage, to be honest. Thanks a lot, who too? <laughs> <laughs> OK, up next, uh, John Richardson, your poem. Well, you can't beat that, can you? Unless I try and perform as John Cooper Clark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, give it a crack. I should have tried it out in private to see if it's offensive or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think there's any better forum than on television for the first time. <laughs> Let's just find out if he's going to punch me in the face. <laughs> You should see my impression of a beagle in a cardigan. <laughs> Musicians and actors, do they get on? I've heard they go shopping to keep the bond strong. A Western singer in spa with a Western <laughs> film star. I wonder, did Twain and Wayne avoid the rain on the train? But the best sight of all, and I think you'll agree, is Elton shoe shopping with his best friend Bradley. Who are they? Where are they? Three words only. John Cooper Clarks. <laughs> well, that was fab. It's always nice to get a name check. That's got a lot going for it, that, John. Thanks, John. <laughs> and last but least, Joe. <laughs> uh, my poem's called Thanks, Mate, Now I've Shat Myself. <laughs> Well, I think we've got a winner there, haven't we? I mean... <laughs> if I'm running towards the lab shouting, it's coming out, it's coming out, <laughs> don't stop me and ask me where I got my nest of tables. <laughs> Thanks, mate, now I've shat myself. <laughs> and don't dare me to eat 50 Cadbury's cream eggs, then let me have a go on your trampoline. What do you think was going to happen? <laughs> Thanks, mate. Now I've shat myself. <laughs> and don't tickle me when I'm chatting to the bus driver about how much I shit myself. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Oh, hang on. I don't think I followed through that time. Oh, no, I have. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Now I've shat myself. Uh, what do you think? Well, never has a lack of intestinal fortitude been better expressed. <laughs> well, well done, Joe. Thanks, Sean. I mean, there's five points on the line here. Who's going to get them? I've got to go for the name check. Oh. John. <laughs> five points to John Richardson. <laughs> I arrived here this evening in the best kind of car known to man. And that car is, no, not a larder. The difference between a larder and a Jehovah's Witness you can shut the door on a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> the best kind of car, obviously, is a higher car for these very reasons. These are the social advantages inherent in the rented vehicle as itemised here under. Double part, don't lock the door, push the pedals through the floor, give it loads and then some more. It's a higher car, baby. Grip the stick, <laughs> grind the gears, watch that distance disappear, never be yours in a thousand years. It's a higher car, baby. Higher <laughs> car, higher car, why would anybody buy a car? Bang it, prang it, say ta-ta. It's a higher <laughs> car, baby. Bad behaviour on the street, save yourself a couple of sheets, collision waiver, keep it sweet, higher car, baby. Drive the...
anywhere, just like you don't <laughs> care. Put it down nowhere and say, it's a hire car, baby. Hire car, hire car. Why hot wire a car? Whenever you require a car, hire a car, baby. <laughs> Try not to kill yourself or injure anybody else. Don't forget to fasten your belt. Rent it, dent it, bang it, prang it, bump it, dump it, scorch it, torch it, crash and burn it, don't return it, lost deposit, let them earn it. <laughs> Who cares, it's on the firm, it's a hire car, baby. <laughs> Best time. Thank you for class, everyone. <laughs> this particular one is uh, set in a mythical olden. Why <laughs> mythical? It has to be that way because I've never been to Oldham. <laughs> I'm from Manchester, so why would I... It's in the opposite direction to everywhere I wanted to go. <laughs> Whenever Oldham, the subject of Oldham comes up, it's usually on the news every so often. It's never good. <laughs> so I figure it needs a little help in the public relations area. So I'm sure Oldham is anxious to be seen as a modern go-ahead city. Probably got a, a town motto, reversing into the future together, something <laughs> like that. It's not twinned with anywhere, but it's got a suicide pact with Gdansk. <laughs> the news is never good. So I thought it needs a little of the old uh, poetical, magical, oofal dust uh, sprinkling over it to drag it kicking and screaming into the mid-20th century. <laughs> right. Trouble at mouth. Daily Bugle, front page news. A drunken posse on a booze cruise. Swear me in, I got nothing to lose. High five, low morale. Trouble I, trouble I, trouble at Mal. I heard about it at the Taj Mahal. <laughs> I nearly choked on me Tarkadal. <laughs> I quizzed Chief Wiggum and he said, Wow. <laughs> Come on, boys. Trouble at the mouth. <laughs> Tripe stand bloody fell over. Savour the level of drama in that one line. <laughs> <laughs> Tripe stand bloody fell over. <laughs> it's covered the place in a beefy odour. <laughs> Better take a nosegate, pal. Trouble I, trouble I, trouble at Mal. Bury my heart at Clinton Cards. Remember <laughs> me to the old guard. These days you just gotta be hard, cos, like they say in this here locale, trouble I, trouble I, trouble at Mal. H&M is full of flunkies, <laughs> and Tony and Guy couldn't give a monkeys. <laughs> in the dying words of Gore Vidal, Happen it's trouble. Aye, trouble at mouth. <laughs> wow. Thank you for Clark, everyone. Oh, thank you for Clark. Have you got any poems for us? Yes, I do, Jimmy, and uh, this is one from way back. Uh, it's called The Hell Fanatic. It wasn't written from experience. I guess you could <laughs> tell by the cadaverous complexion. <laughs> uh, Around the block against the clock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tick tock, running out of breath, running out of socks, rubber on the road, flippity flop, non skid agility. Chop, chop, no time to hang about. Work out, oh, fanatic, work out, crack a dawn, lifting weights, telltale art reverberates. High in poly unsaturates, low in poly saturates. A Duke of Edinburgh's award awaits. It's a man's life, he's a hell fanatic, so was his wife. A one man war against decay, enjoys himself the hard way, allows himself a Mars a day. How old am I? What do I weigh? Punch me there, does it hurt? No way. Running on the spot, don't get too hot. He's a hell fanatic, that's why not. Running in a traffic jam, taking in a lead, he gets hyperactivity, never goes to bed deep down, he wants to kick it in the head. They'll regret it when they're dead, there's more to life than fun. He's a hell fanatic, he's got to run. Beans, greens, tangerines, low cholesterol, margarines, his limbs are loose, his teeth are clean, he's a high octane, fresh air fiend, you've got to admit he's keen. What can you do but be impressed? He's a hell fanatic, give it a rest. Shadow box. Punch the wall, one aside football, what's the score? One all, would have been a copper, too small, could have been a jockey, too tall, knees up, knees up, head the ball. Nervous energy makes him sick, he's a hell fanatic, he makes you sick. Right. Hell fanatic. Yes. <laughs>